Hello everyone, so today I am here to do a current TBR pile video. So basically, when I was in Ohio, I bought a whole bunch of books and I actually filmed a book haul in Ohio and then I got home and I didn't have the footage. I don't know what the hell happened, I didn't delete it, I know for a fact that I pressed record, so I have no clue what happened to it, I don't know if it got corrupted and my phone just took it off, like my phone's been having some issues, um, so... Basically, I got home and I didn't know I didn't have that footage anymore, so I already kind of started organizing these books into my TBR. Um, and if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will know that I kind of talked about it on there that I have the biggest TBR I've ever had in my life right now. Um, physically, for sure, but also this is not going to count all of the Kindle books that I have. I have like 60 or 70 books on my Kindle at the moment. I've just been going crazy with my Kindle because for a little while there I was like, oh, I'm just going to like, I'm going to transfer kind of just to reading on my Kindle. And then I w did a ton of book shopping. I still definitely want to kind of transfer to using my Kindle more. Um, but uh, basically I moved, so I want to go to all my favorite bookstores in New Hampshire and then when I got to Georgia I wanted to go and check out all of the bookstores in Georgia and then not all of the bookstores in Georgia in near me and then I went to Ohio on vacation and I bought a ton of books so basically uh, I have a ton of books on my TBR at the moment and it's been a little while since I give you guys like a TBR update um, so yeah this is gonna be a long one um, and I hope you guys all enjoy so I kind of have them organized into categories and I'm going to try and not take too long on each book um, or we'll be here forever. Um, but yeah, uh, I have them kind of organized into categories so I'm going to go fiction first, like general fiction. So first up is definitely my smallest category which is within fiction um, and that is fantasy. You guys know I don't read a lot of fantasy um, but I've been recently just picking up a couple to check out. Actually, I picked up one of these. Haley gave me one of these and one of them came in a book box. But the first one I have is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. And this is a book that I saw Riley from Riley Marie reads. You're gonna actually hear a lot of her books recommendations. I feel like in the next couple of months, I feel like she's the only booktuber I still get recommendations from. So I've been picking up a lot of books that she has recommended. Um, and yeah, she read this a while ago. Um, but I only just picked it up because I thought it sounded great. Also, I was planning on reading this during June for Pride Month because it does have LGBT representation, but I didn't. But I'm still really interested in it, so. Fantasy. Wow, who is she? And then Haley gave me, this is actually an ARC, it's an advanced reader's copy for House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. And this is a book that I heard about so much when it first came out. When was it released? August of 2019 because everyone was saying that this was such a great like fantasy horror um and yeah she won this in a Goodreads giveaway. Like I feel like Haley's won a couple of things I'm just like I've literally never won anything in my life. <laughs> but yeah she got this arc and she read it and she said it was great but she didn't want it anymore and she couldn't sell it so she just gave it to me. Um, and yeah, I'm actually really interested to read this. Again, it's been a long time since I've really read fantasy, but I'm always down for a horror, so I'm actually really excited about this one too. And then the last one I got in the Unplugged book box, which I have an unboxing for on my channel, and that is Capture the Crown by Jennifer Eastep, and this is the first book in a new fantasy series, and it sounds really, really cool, like a lot of badass female characters, which again, I haven't read in a while, so like I do read about badass women characters, but not in fantasy. So again, another one I'm just really excited to try out and check out, see if I still like fantasy or not. So yes. Then I have some less uh, fantastical books. First off, I have Byron in Love by Edna O'Brien, and this is one that I picked up in one of my favorite Portsmouth bookstores. And this was just kind of a like on a whim buy. Basically, if you guys didn't know, Lord Byron was one of my favorite things to study in my undergrad and actually the essay that I wrote on Byron and fame was what got me into my master's program. So I love Lord Byron a lot. I have his complete works um, over there. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. But yes, I love Lord Byron and I think him as a person is so incredibly interesting. If you guys don't know, Byron's kind of like one of the first known bisexuals. Like again, that word didn't really exist yet when he was alive but he was it was like pretty obvious that he was bisexual or pansexual attracted to all genders or multiple genders 
Um, and yeah, I think he's fascinating. And I think it's really interesting to read queer people from history, especially ones who have such amazing like works. So anyways, I'm really excited to read this. It's like a fictionalized account of his life. And then I have a couple of books that I picked up in Ohio. So first up, we have actually one of my most anticipated books of the year. And this is definitely going to be one that I pick up in July, 100%. Um, the Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. If you guys didn't know, you know me. I don't love YA. I just simply don't. But Maureen Johnson is a complete outlier for me. I absolutely love her Name of the Star series. And I absolutely love her Truly Devious series. And I shouldn't. I hate mystery. And I hate YA. And this is a YA mystery series. But it's so good. They are so fun. They're so fast paced. I love the characters. And yeah, the trilogy, the original trilogy, which are these three books, wrapped up last year. Um, but this is kind of a spin-off following the same characters, but I think they're at a summer camp instead of at their school. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to read this. I love Maureen Johnson so much. And again, I'm so excited to see these characters again. And then I picked up a book that basically, if you guys saw my, what was it, my June wrap-up, I read These Violent Delights by Micah Nemerever, which was a dark academia queer book. Um, and basically it solidified that I don't hate dark academia. I just hated The Secret History. <laughs> so I wanted to try out some more dark academia. This has been on my list for actually a really long time. I actually have the audiobook for it on Audible from like literally a year ago, but I am not really listening to audios anymore, so I decided to pick it up physically. Also, it's beautiful, and that is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I know that this has such mixed reviews, but I usually like books that have really mixed reviews because, honestly, the worst thing to me is having a three-star read. I would rather have a dozen one-star reads than, like, one three-star read. I hate three-star reads. I think they are just the worst because it's like I felt nothing to this because if it's one star at least you made me really angry and I fucking hated you but or or I gave you five stars and I love you so I'm really excited for this because it does seem to be a one or five star and I'm excited to try out more um dark academia and then this next one honestly H Haley gave me this recommendation and um she kind of compared it to The Immortalist which were one is one of my favorite books of all time and that is The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker and this is like a magical realism book where that follows this town or area that um people are falling asleep and never waking up and it becomes somewhat of an epidemic uh within this again town area and yeah, I, she kind of sold me with just the um, description of it and again, comparing it a bit to The Immortalist. So, gonna try it out. Jeez, we've only gone through one stack. I'm so sorry that this video is gonna be so long. All right, next up we have uh, literary fiction. Jeez. All right, so first off, I have The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. This is one that you guys have been recommending me for literal years, and I feel like everything has recommended me this for literal years. I don't know, I really don't know what this is. It takes place in 1327, and I always get this recommended to me when I talk about Murakami. Um, I don't know what this is, though. I don't know if it's magical realism. I don't know if it's, like, the way it's written, or the, I don't, I have no clue, no clue what this is, but... I'm really excited to read it because everyone's been recommending me it for so long. So hopefully this is a five star read for me. And then I have a Man Booker Prize winner, which is Milkman by Anna Burns. This is one that I just saw going around uh, Bookstagram for a while there, like a couple of months ago, and I saw it in a used bookstore, so I picked it up. I believe this is a stream of consciousness novel, which... <laughs> Let me just talk about the next book, too. I also have Duck's Newbery for it, which I'm only 65 pages in. And I feel so bad. My fiancé bought me this full price for my birthday last year, and my birthday is coming up. So I just haven't picked it up. I haven't been reading much. So, yeah, Stream of Consciousness is just, like, one of those things I really have to pay attention to. Like, I really, really have to, like you know, go into it and, like, make sure I'm reading every single word kind of thing, which obviously is a lot of work and a lot of effort because I've talked about how I actually read. I usually, like, can take in, like, kind of a whole section of a page at once. That's how I read so fast. Um, so I don't usually sit there and, like, actually read every single word. Does, does that make sense? I talked about that in a video. But, yeah, these I'm so excited for. I love Stream of Consciousness, but <sighs> I just haven't been in the mood for it, so... 
I think I want to try to get to this one before I get to this one though because this one has been on my shelf for a lot longer. And then I have Snow by Orhan Pamuk um, and this is a Turkish novel I believe um, translated from Turkish and this is a book that I got recommended from Emmy from Emmy Reads channel. She was reading it and I just was like we read so similarly, so whenever she like really raves about a book, I usually pick it up. Um, but yeah, this is kind of under that category of uh, The Name of the Rose for me, of I feel like I've heard about this forever, and everyone always recommends it to me, and I just have no idea what it really is. I think it just tells the story of this man, but through like a lot of imagery and like symbolism and metaphors and stuff about snow. So yeah, I'm excited though. I really... I do usually like these books, so again, I hope this is a five star for me. And next up I have Love and Other Thought Experiments by Sophie Ward, and this is another book that I actually really hope I pick up maybe today when I'm filming this. Um, but yeah, this was long listed for the Man Booker Prize, and I saw Max from, well he was Well Done Books on YouTube now, he's on Instagram. I saw him talk about it, and I decided to pick it up because it sounded really interesting. It is apparently super, super weird. The description is literally about, I think it's about two women who are planning their future together and then um, one night one of them wakes up terrified and tells the other that an ant has crawled inside of her eye and it's just kind of what happens to the life because of that. Like what? <laughs> so very intrigued. And then another book I picked up in Ohio is The Virgin Blue by Tracy Chevalier. Um, if you guys didn't know, I read The Girl with the Pearl Earring several years ago and it remains one of my favorite books. I absolutely love that book. That's one of those books that gave like four stars when I finished and now years later I consider it like a favorite book. You know what I mean? So yeah I'm really I've been wanting to try out something else by her and I always see her in thrift stores and stuff and I always pick up her books and then put them back. So this was literally at Goodwill for like 50 cents so I finally picked it up. I don't know if this is the best place to like go with Chavalet, but this is the one I picked up, so this is what we got. Another one that I picked up at Half Price Books is The Wizard of the Crow by Nagugi Wa Tiongo, um, and this is a piece of African literature. I actually have a couple of pieces of African literature that I picked up while I was in Ohio. I just feel like that is an area of literature I really haven't picked up much from. I feel like uh, I've been trying to read a lot more like Latin American literature or Latin literature and Latin American literature um, and obviously I read a ton of Asian literature but Africa is a place I don't think I've really ever read anything from so this really caught my eye and it sounds really really interesting and really weird so I decided to pick it up. I've never heard anyone mention this book so hopefully it's great. And then the last one is another one that I saw all over Bookstagram with all of my friends on Bookstagram talking about it for a while there and that is The Unbearable Lightness of, Be of Being by Milan Kundera. This is an author that I've heard so much about. Um, I believe that this is translated. The author is Czechoslovakian which I'm like wow you're old enough to be from Czechoslovakia and not Czech Republic or Czechia, but um, I don't know if it was translated from Czech or it also says he lived a, most of his life in France, but I think this is translated, tell me if I'm wrong, but yeah, this has caught my eye so many times because of the uh, cover from Bookstagram, so I saw it and I bought it. <laughs> Actually, speaking of translated literature, let's do that next. I have a whole, I have a whole stack of specifically translated literature. So first up we have Where the Wild Ladies Are by Eiko Matsuda. I picked this up quite a while ago and I still haven't read it. Um, this is a collection of short stories, which is just something I feel like I always struggle. I tell you guys so many times I hate short story collections. I was really excited to try this out and I just haven't read it. I'm so bad at reading short stories, but that's that. I have At Night I Become a Monster by Yor Sumino. You guys know I read Yor Sumino's. Um, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, and I had that same dream last night. Um, he writes, like, novels that usually get translated into manga. Um, but yeah, this one is just a novel at the moment, and I love, love this art style. So, yeah, another one that I'm just excited to read, Japanese literature. Oh, I don't think this is actually translated. I don't know why I have it in this stack, but I have Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. I think it's, it's yeah, it's sold in, like, play format or like script format 
So yeah, I've heard, again, amazing things about this, so I want to try it out. My last piece of Latin or Hispanic literature, um, I have A Luminous Republic by Andes, Andres Barma, and this was again translated from Spanish. I don't know where this person lived. I'm pretty sure they're South American though. Um, but yeah, this is one that I picked up at the same time I picked up Fever Dream. Um, and yeah, I just haven't picked up. It's so small. I just really need to, but it's still here. And then I have a couple of pieces of Chinese literature. Yes. Oh God, I need to read more Chinese literature. It's a problem. I have To Live by Yu Hua, and this is probably the biggest Chinese novel that I get recommended constantly. No clue what it's about, but again, I saw it at a used bookstore, so I decided to pick it up. I also got a book from Haley. She gave me this because she picked it up and she read it and she thought it was just okay, but she said she thought I would enjoy it a lot more, and that is My Good Son by Yang Hua, and this is a piece of Chinese literature that also has LGBT representation, which I love. So, yes. Excited to read this one too. I also have The Bard by Chan Ho Kai, and this is a Chinese thriller. It takes place in Hong Kong, so I'm pretty sure it's a Chinese thriller. Um, and yeah, I've had this on my list for so long, and then I saw it at a used bookstore, and I was like, I've never seen this book in person. So I decided to pick it up. Um, I also officially have way too many thrillers on my TBR because I have two that are translated, and then I have a whole stack. So your girl needs to get on that this September and October. Because yes, I also have 6-4 by Hideo Yokoyama, which I think is so interesting. I've seen so many people pick this up recently, and I'm just like, did we all suddenly notice this book existed? Um, but yeah, this is a Japanese thriller, and I'm really excited about it because a lot of people are saying that it's a lot less of a thriller and more of a commentary on, like, Japanese, like, Japan's, um, police system. Um, so yeah, I'm interested, you know. Like I like every other book. And then I have one piece of Korean literature, and that is I Hear Your Voice by Young Ha Kim, Kim Young Ha. Um, and yeah, this is about two boys who are best friends, and one of them is mute. So I was really excited when I found this. I've never heard of this. I just saw it, and I picked it up. That's the best feeling ever, though, is when you find something in a bookstore you've never heard of and you're so excited about. That was this one. All right, now let's do thrillers, because I already kind of just talked about a couple, so yeah, let's go thrillers. So next up I have The Project by Courtney Summers. This is a YA thriller mystery. Um, this is the person who wrote, God, what was that book called? Sadie. She wrote Sadie, which I did read and I actually really enjoyed. So I saw her new book came out and this cover is amazing. How could you not want to pick it up? So yeah, I picked it up. I love, I again, I love horror. And then I have one that's been on my TBR for literally a year now, like I picked it up last summer, and that is Love Minus 80 by uh, Will McIntosh, and yeah, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this this fall, if it kills me. <laughs> this is also one that Haley recommended me, so I want to read that. Yeah, I also have to pick up a bunch of books because me and Haley did like a BFF Picks Your TBR video, so I gotta pick up all those books too. <laughs> I also have Pink Mountain on Locust Island by Jamie Marina Lau, and this is a book I've never heard of. I saw it in a bookstore and I picked it up. Again, love when that happens. But yeah, it kind of has to do with, where does this take place? It takes place in Chinatown, and it has a bunch to do with like, uh, it kind of sounds like gang violence, the mob, which I don't usually love, but this sounded interesting enough that I wanted to check it out. I also picked up Colum Columiski Heights by Lionel Davidson, and this honestly just reminds me of The Thing, the movie, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and yeah, it takes place in a, sub a frozen Siberian hell lost in endless night and a um, like research station. So again, another thriller. We have kind of a different one for a thriller. I have The Midwives by Chris ba Bahalian. I read one of his other books uh, when I was in like high school um, and I just never read anything else by him but I feel like this book always taunts me. I always see it in used bookstores so I finally decided to just pick it up. It is a medical thriller. Basically it's about a midwife who um, a woman that she's helping give birth uh, like dies and so she cuts her open and performs a c-section to save the baby but then people are saying that she killed the woman. Um, so yeah, interesting in that one for sure. And then I have Women Talking by Miriam Toes, 
And this follows, this sounds so interesting to me, it basically follows a bunch of Mennonite women who they think they're getting, like, attacked and raped by demons, but in reality it's just the men of their area, like, drugging and raping them, and it's basically about what they decide to do to protect themselves and their children. I love some powerful women protecting themselves and others. I also got Straight Horror, which we have Parasite by Darcy Coates. This is another one that I got recommended by Riley Murray, and it sounds amazing. Again, kind of similar to The, the Thing. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. Lydia Haley found this at Half Price Books, and I stole it from her. So. And then this one is from the Unplugged Book Box, and that is The Stranger Behind You by Carol Goodman. And this sounds like it's going to be a really great mystery thriller, but also with some social commentary. Um, because it has to do with a reporter who, like, writes an article about, like, a very high-up political figure, um, or something, or a businessman or something, and kind of, uh, them being a sexual predator, so I just think that this is gonna be pretty relevant right now. Oh my god, I completely forgot. So I bought Fifty Shades of Grey and Grey. I read the first two of this, and I will literally always remain by the fact that I know they're horrible, I know they're shitty, but they are so entertaining. I feel like, again, I keep saying this, I feel like everyone forgot that these are Twilight fan fiction. Twilight fan fiction. And it's so fun if you are a Twilight fan. Me and Haley are huge Twilight fans. We've been rereading Twilight for the last couple of years. Um, and basically, if you're a Twilight fan and you haven't read these, I do recommend it just because it is so funny reading her work and literally being like, I know what scene you're rewriting. Like, I know that this is this scene. I know that this is this scene. But yeah, basically, I never finished it. I read the first two, and I never read the third one. And then also, she's been coming out with uh, books written from Christian's point of view. And basically, Midnight Sun, I low-key liked even more than the original Twilight. So I'm kind of like, will I like it this one even more than these? I'm interested. You know what I mean? These are just kind of fun things I wanted to pick up. And me and Haley, my buddy, read these to annotate them and stuff like that. So it just sounds like it'll be a fun time. All right, and then I have nonfiction. Jeez, like, Kate, can you stop buying books? So the first one I'm interested in reading, but I know it's going to be problematic. And that is Labeled Autistic, a true story. And this is about Temple Grandine who, if you guys are in, like, the disability rights movement or know a lot about disability, Temple Grandine is a huge name within um, the disability rights movement. And this was kind of, like, the first book written about her. Um, and, yeah, it's literally from, like, the 19... Oh, God, what was it? 1986. So I am so prepared for this to be, like, really problematic, um, especially, like, literally just, like, how it's portrayed on the cover I'm just like they make aut like also the like back I'm just like you make autism sound like it's some like terrifying like thing and I'm just like whoo I'm glad we've gotten farther away from that but yeah I saw this at lit it was at Goodwill for like literally 30 cents so I decided to pick it up and then I picked up a African memoir and that is When a Crocodile Eats the Sun by Peter Godwin no clue what this is <laughs> I saw it so I decided to pick it up um, it has a lot of ratings on Goodreads. I was kind of shocked. It had like 30,000 ratings or something like that. And I was like, what? And it had really good ratings. So I decided to pick it up. I, again, I don't really know what that is, but. And then I have everyone's favorite nonfiction at the moment that everyone is telling me to read. I promise I'm going to get to it soon. And that is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. Yeah, this is apparently just absolutely incredible. I believe she is, what is she, Korean? Yeah, she's Korean-American. And basically it's her struggling with the fact that she is, like, two different, the, like, two different sides of her, of being Korean and being American, and, like, how she kind of deals with that and everything. I hear that it's just an amazing book, super emotional, and, yeah, I'm so excited for this one. And, yeah, I've been really bad about uh, reading nonfiction. I was so good for a little while there, and I absolutely binged a bunch, got really into it, and I still love it, but I just have been bad about picking it up. So I have a bunch more nonfiction that you guys have probably already seen. I got Hunger by Roxanne Gay. Again, excited to hear a fat woman talk about being fat in America and how America sucks. Then I have Leftover Women by uh, Lita Hong Fincher, and this is a nonfiction I've been so interested in for years. Finally picked it up, and it's about um, the resurgence of gender inequality in China. 
So really excited for that one. This one has been on my TBR for years. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever gonna pick it up, but I love the cover. So, um, what to think about machines that think. And this is just um, a lot of different essays about AI and machines in modern day. I've got Joe Biden's book, Promise Me Dad. This is, I wanted to read this before he became president. Didn't happen, but uh, he'll be president for four like years. So I have a little while. Another one that's been on my TBR for years. I read a lot of these in my sexual ethics class when I was a senior in undergrad. Um, so I actually have read quite a few of these. I just wanted to finish it. And that is Yes Means Yes, Visions of Female Sexual Power in a World Without Rape by Jocelyn Friedman and Jessica Valenti. Jessica Valenti is my queen. So yeah, this is another one. Again, I have read a lot of these in here. Um, I just want to finish it. God, it's been 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, we're gonna do classics next. I have so many classics. Oh god. This, this shelf is gonna get destroyed in a second. So first off, the books that I picked up in Ohio, like part of my book haul. Um, I have Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achibi, and this is more of a modern classic. Um, but yeah, this is a African author and actually fun facts. He was a professor at UMass Amherst, which is where I went for undergrad. Um, but yeah, I've never had to read this. Don't know really what it's about. It tells uh, two intertwining stories that take place in Nigeria. I, okay, guys, listen. Uh, I just... I loved Middlemarch so much and then I just picked up every single George Eliot book. I really hope I like her. <laughs> like, jeez, Kate. I don't, I didn't mean to do this. I swear. I Everywhere I went, I just saw like one Eliot book. So I was like, sure, I'll pick it up. And now I have like everything she's written. So anyways, I have Silas Marner. Um, apparently this is where the idea of Don't Judge a Book by its cover came from. Or no, was that The Mill on the Floss? It's one of her books. Um, but yeah, this is the one I feel like is the most famous besides Middle March. It's also the one my friend told me that she actually had to read and she hated it, so we'll see. And then I also got Daniel Deronda, um, by Elliot. Don't know what this is. Yeah. Finishing up Elliot, I also have Adam Bede. Um, again, don't know what this is about. <laughs> and I also have The Mill on the Floor. <laughs> God, why did I do this to myself? This was, this is the one I think I'm gonna pick up next. Um, but yeah, you girl just loved Middlemarch, so I kind of went crazy. I think I literally have all of her books now, so yes. And then I also finished up my um, Wordsworth Classics editions for uh, Dostoevsky. So I bought the last two that I needed, and this is The House of the Dead and The Gambler. So this is two novellas. And then I also have Notes from Underground and Other Stories. So I believe Notes from an Underground is actually pretty long, and then the other ones are just short stories. So yes. More Dostoevsky, of course. I actually picked up another Dostoevsky in a different edition because, okay, also if you guys wanted to know, these editions, the uh, Wordsworth Classics editions that I always buy, these don't have all of his works. They just have his most famous, um, which I'm actually happy about because I thought that I was going to be done after I finished those. So I picked up The Adolescent, also by Dostoevsky, and in this beautiful edition. No clue what it is. No idea. <laughs> And then I also have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. This is gonna happen eventually. I also have The Plague by Albert Camus. I read The Stranger by him, really enjoyed it, so I decided to pick it up. Yes. <laughs> and then I actually have a couple of classics that my friend knew that I collected these, so he just gave me a ton of them. I've never really heard of any of these, so I'd love to know if you guys like actually think I should read them. So I have The Education of Henry Adams, don't know what it is. I have The Lady's Paradise by Emile Zola. This looks kind of cool. Um, the Story of an African Farm by Olive Schreiner. And then this one I actually feel like I've heard about since I got it from him. And that is Lorna Dune. I feel like this is actually like a pretty a pretty popular one. I don't know. Um, and then also the, Ga the Gallic War by Caesar. These are just some random ones that I have. Don't know if I'm actually gonna read them, but I will if you guys tell me that they're good. Oh my God, I missed this one for fiction. I have Darling by Kay Ingram. This is a Peter Pan retelling that has been on my anticipated books list for a long time. I also have Vanity Fair, just one I randomly decided to pick up. I also have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, another one I wanna read in the fall. I have too many fall books. And then I have a ton of, a bunch of Austin. I have Emma and Persuasion, 
which are these gorgeous editions. And also, A Tale of Two Cities by Dickens. I've never read! What? <laughs> I've never read A Tale of Two Cities. You know what else I haven't read by Dickens? The Pickwick Papers and Our Mutual Friend. Can you tell I'm set with classics? <laughs> I also just found that I didn't mention A Master of Petersburg by Jam Coetzee, writing about Fyodor Dostoevsky's life. Really interesting, that one. <laughs> and then I think the last thing I have to talk about, jeez. Um, these are books that I bought in Ohio, and they are just gorgeous, and I love them. And those are these Cuddle Publisher um, Japanese books. Um, basically, it looks like these are published in the actual format of the Japanese books, like from Japanese, but they're in English. And yeah, they all have the Japanese title along the bottom, so their covers are also gorgeous. So I have Footprint in the Snow by Kenjiro Tokutami, and this is the only one that I've never really heard of out of this stack. A Personal Matter by Kazuburo O. Oh, this one I've heard about for so long. We have Mon by Soseki Natsumi, which I've been meaning to read more by him because I love I'm a Cat. Light and Darkness, I have actually tried by him, but I want I, I picked it up. <laughs> and then another one, Natsumi Soseki, is The Three Cornered World. Um, gorgeous cover. And then um, The Ruined Man by Kobo Abe, which is another author that I feel like I've been meaning to pick up for so long. Yeah, these are absolutely gorgeous. I literally was like, I don't even care if I don't read these editions. Like, I might get them on my Kindle or something. But these little published books are just gorgeous. I couldn't leave them there. So, here we go. God, okay, I'm so sorry. This is literally 40 minutes long. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and all of the books that are on my TBR. Can I give you guys a little, um... Wow, that's the behind that seat, the seat there. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and definitely tell me down in the comments below if you've read any of these books, which ones you think I should bump to the top of my TBR. I really am in such a reading slump, guys. I just feel like this year has been impossible. Like, I feel like the bookish community is just overall in a slump. And I don't know. I don't know. I feel like everyone's talking about the fact that we just aren't enjoying hobbies like we used to. I'm really trying to figure out how to work reading back into my life because I really truly do want to read all of these. And it just makes me so sad the fact that I probably would have literally read all of these this year if I had been reading as much as I usually do. Um, but yeah, I have all of these books on my TBR as well as like 60 or 70 more on my Kindle. God, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's stressing me out just a little bit. But um, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And again, tell me if you guys have read any of these and I need to push them to the top of my TBR. But yeah, anyways, I love you all and I'll see you all soon. Bye!